Hey everyone! Today on the Plastic Canvas we're painting Arav from Tainted Grail by Awaken Realms. Hey everyone, Matt here from The Plastic Canvas and welcome to the second episode of this Tainted Grail series. And today we're painting Arav, he's one of the characters that you can play as in this story based exploration game. So we're kicking off this series with Arav because my wife and a friend of ours are going to be playing this game together and each of us are going to be painting the characters that we're playing as. So my wife has picked Bior or Bayor, however you say that, I'm not too sure. And then our friend has grabbed Ailey, which has left Arav and Maggot for me to paint. So I'm not too sure which one I'm going to be playing as, but we've got Arav in this video. Maggot will be coming up next and then I'll be doing the men here later in the series after that. Now, Arav's a pretty simple mini to paint. There's nothing too complicated going on with him. But in terms of the processes and techniques that went into painting him, it's very indicative of the way that I paint a mini, certainly in terms of how I highlight and shade and build contrast and sort of create a focal point for people to look at when they're, when they're looking at the mini. So I'll talk about each of those different aspects as they sort of come up a little bit more in depth. But just things like with the highlighting and shading, I use washes in some spots for the shading, but then layering in others, depending on the texture and whether a wash is actually going to be beneficial or not. Um, and then with the, just sort of building that contrast just through um, getting that real, real difference between the brightest highlight and the deepest shadow and referring back to the Zenithal Prime that I did to really make sure that the brightest highlight and the deeper shadow end up in the right spot. And with the focal point, I use his um, sort of cloth thing that he's got tied around his waist as a bit of a contrasting element there, just as something to, to stand out. So I'll go through each of them as I as I get to them, but there's just some, some th th things in there that I really try and do with each mini that I paint. Um, and yeah, they're really quite indicative with Arif. So as a starting point, which I mentioned just before, I did a Zenithal Prime, so hitting the whole thing with black and then grey from a fairly high angle and then white from directly above, just to make it really, really clear um, as I go into painting where all of those highlights and shadows need to be. And because I'm using my brush for base coating, I, um, I took some photos just to use as a, as a reference for when I come to do my highlighting and shading to refer back to just to make sure I get them all into the right spot. And now I'm just into, into base coating. So yeah, starting with the lowest layer and working up from there. So I started with his skin um, and then just doing the, the next layer that goes over that and then the next layer, then the, then the next layer, just to make sure that I'm finishing off with the topmost layer. Because as, as I've mentioned plenty of times, it's so much easier to um, get that nice clean line between two colors when you're painting the part that is going over the top of the other bit. Now, one thing that was tricky with the base coating was just trying to get the correct skin tone um, because at the moment I have only one skin tone and that's that tan skin. But if you're looking at the artwork of Arif, he does have this very kind of desaturated grey skin tone. And yeah, I, I don't have that sort of ready to go. So... I, Sorry, so I needed to mix up a skin tone there. So I used that tan skin that I've got. I put some gray in with it. It didn't sort of really work out. Um, it's all right. Um, in the end, I'm sort of happy enough with it after I've done all the highlighting and shading. But at this point here, it was it was good enough. But yeah, I, I had quite a bit of trouble actually mixing that uh, mixing that correct color up. 
Um, other than that part there, everything was pretty basic. Um, now, the one thing that I did do to, as a bit of a contrasting element, was that you can see the, the cloth that he has tied around his waist and that's tied around the end of his sight there. Um, I painted that red just so that it stood out a little bit from everything else because in terms of the artwork for the game, I wasn't able to find an image of him that showed his entire body. On his player card, there is a, a bit that kind of shows sort of from his waist up, I suppose. And then only sort of fairly similar images to that online. So I sort of had to make that up a little bit. Um, from what I could tell from the artwork, it would probably be brown or something like that. But I thought if I paint that brown, it just is kind of kind of going to blend into everything else. And then there's not going to be really one element that stands out. And I really try and create a focal point with each, each of the minis that I paint, just something for people to be drawn towards rather than just kind of generally gazing over the whole thing. So I thought if I throw some red in there, that's something that I can build some contrast with both in terms of the highlighting and shading, but then just also the red standing out against you know, the gray of his pants and the, the skin tone and that. Um, so red was sort of the color that I ended up picking out just to have some part of it stand out because purely from the artwork, there wasn't really anything that was going to. And um, I did toss around a little bit between whether the cloth that's tied around his scythe would be red as well or not, because I didn't know if I wanted to have two separate red elements in there. But just thinking about him as like a character, that cloth that he's got tied around his waist there, he probably doesn't have many different options in terms of material. So I figured in thinking of his story, he probably just would have ripped some off that and then tied that around his scythe as well. Because yeah, I was thinking of maybe doing like a, a bone color initially for that cloth and then doing a sepia wash just to make it look like um, just a bit of a dirty rag sort of thing. Um, but yeah, trying to think about him, I thought, well, he probably doesn't have a lot of money. He probably doesn't have a lot of cloth. And so he'd probably be fairly restricted with what he could actually use. So yeah, he probably just tore some off that one around his waist, tied that on there. So that's why I ended up doing it the same color. All right, so the wash that I'm putting on the skin here is probably the biggest issue that I had with painting Arav because I didn't want to um, for that wash to have too much of an effect and darken his skin off too much because as I mentioned he's, um, His skin does have that quite desaturated sort of gray tone to it um, I only used a little bit as I was putting it on and the problem with that is that it didn't really end up flowing into all of the recesses that much and so it kind of dried quite quickly and in a real sort of blotchy way. I don't know if you can really tell sort of there, but it really, really doesn't look good. And to actually try and get it into all of those different recesses, I kind of put it on a couple of times and then yeah, it's ended up drying darker than I wanted it to. And it's really, really blotchy, especially on the parts where there are um, those more, um, muscles that are going to get lots of highlighting. So those more sort of broader surfaces, I suppose, that's where it's dried really, really blotchy. So because I didn't like that, instead of sort of persisting with that and trying to trying to save it, I do just restart that whole, um, that whole skin tone. And so that, that happens a little bit later on. Um, but so I'll talk about it as I, as I rewash that, but yeah, that I really, really wasn't happy with that. So I scrapped that, repaint it and then come back and, and do the wash again. All right, so here I'm just restarting the skin tone. Um, all I'm doing is just blocking that same color back in, um, nothing different to, to the first time around. One thing that I did do though, was I tried to mix a little more of the skin tone in rather than the gray, because even though in the artwork, like I said, he does have that gray tone to his skin, with too much of the gray, it just didn't quite work, just didn't sort of look right. Um, I don't know whether maybe I should have used a darker gray, who knows, but anyway, so as I come in for, um, for the second coat, which I think is this one here, I did just mix a little bit more of that skin tone in so that it is still quite um, desaturated and sort of washed out, um, but it does just have a little bit more warmth to it than, uh, than the original tone that I was going with.
All right, so here's my second crack at doing the wash on the skin. Now, what I did differently here was, as you can see, I'm popping some of it in just into my plastic palette there, and then I just mix some water in just to thin it down a little bit so that I think what the problem was the first time around was because I was using it straight from the pot I had to use such a little bit at a time so that it wasn't too overpowering that it I wasn't able to spread it out and really have it flow into all of the recesses and so by thinning it out with the water it means that I was able to and you can see a comparison here between the thickness um, straight from the pot and how I've thinned it down. Um, so the benefit to having the water mixed in with it which thinned it down meant I was able to put more on at a time and so it was able to flow into all of those recesses and just be more consistent across his torso there um, without being too overpowering and this worked much much better um, so you know it's fine to use it straight from the pot if you do want it to really um, create some deep shadows and if you do want that skin tone to be more affected and to be darker um, but be because here I only wanted to wanted it to just sort of tinge I suppose more the skin tone um, and just more create those shadows um, yeah the thinning it down worked a lot lot better Alright, so here's a good example of how I choose between whether I use washes or layering to do the shading because for his pants I'm just layering in the shadows because the folds in his clothes or in, in his pants there are quite far apart and I think washes work best when you have uh, quite a textured surface and recesses that are really close to each other for the wash to really um, sort of flow into because if you have uh, say in this case here where the, the folds are quite far apart and you end up with lots of broad surfaces the wash tends to I, I find at least that the washes tend to dry a bit blotchy when and, and inconsistently when they have um, those broad surfaces and they don't have recesses to flow into so say with his boots there where I use the Agrax Earthshade there's quite a lot of texture and recesses for the wash to flow into so it's perfect for that but when it's just going to sit there on a smooth surface that's when I find you get those inconsistencies so here I'm layering the shadows up um, because yeah those, those folds are quite far apart so to create the shadows here on his pants because like I mentioned there those folds aren't that close to each other but quite a lot of his pants are in shadow I just blocked in not worrying about the actual folds themselves first of all I just blocked in generally speaking where the shadows were going to be so using the stormy grey um, which is my darkest grey I just thinned it down so that each layer that I put down wouldn't make too much of a difference and then I just yeah blocked it into where I thought generally speaking the shadows would be and then after that dried, I then came back and actually picked out each of those individual recesses just to darken them off. But overall, the shadows were, were sort of blocked in. And then as you can see here, I've just mixed a little bit of black into the stormy grey. And now I'm just going around and just picking out the the deepest part of each of those recesses, each of the folds, just to build that contrast a little bit more. Now what I actually found when I first did it, which was those two um, sort of horizontal shadows um, just kind of in the middle there, it was a bit too dark um, and so I needed to sort of feather it out a little bit more um, and so yeah just um putting a little bit less on and really just picking out the deepest part of the shadow and then just kind of um washing the paint off the bristles um, and then with, with the wet bristles then just kind of feathering it out a little bit more just helped a little bit but it was definitely a good step to do to just to build that extra bit of contrast and just kind of deepen those shadows a little bit more without having to do the whole shadow being really really dark so it just sort of helped um, blend it back out to the base coat of, of his pants um, without sort of creating that kind of really defined line between where the shadow was and then where the shadow ended. So now I'm on to building the highlights here and you can see when I did the shadows it was done in very very few steps it was basically um, thin down the stormy grey and then use that to block in just where the shadows would be then when that dried um, pick out the shadows more carefully um, feathering them out a little bit towards the edges and then I mixed in the black to then do that real defined shadow right in the middle now with the um, the highlighting 
it is done over a few more steps. So I just went back to the base coat that I used, the cloudy gray, just to help blend the highlights into the shadows. And then I started to mix in, as you can see, the misty gray just to lighten it off. And so all I'm doing is just lighten it off a little bit and then block in the color where the um, light would be hitting and then wash, washing the bristles off, and then with the wet bristles, then just feathering those edges out. And just working around, just picking out all of the highlights, and then by the time I get back around to the, the my starting point, it's dried, and then I put another layer down just to build the opacity, and then I put a little bit more of the misty gray in just to lighten it off a little bit more, um, and then start that process again. So basically just doing laps, and just picking out where those highlights need to be, but just putting the paint down where the light would be hitting, and then feathering it out. Um, and then as you can see now, I'm getting towards the last stages of the highlighting. And so now I'm putting the paint down in a smaller area. So because of the way that he's standing there with that scythe over his front leg, even though his front leg is stepped out, the light is really only going to be hitting out kind of where his knee is. And so that's where I sort of put the paint down for the final stage. I think I have one more stage of highlighting to do. So I put it just on his knee there where the light would be hitting the most. And then it feathers back up across his thigh just so that there is that gradient and so that not everywhere is going to end up with that brightest level of, of highlight. And so you can see here on his back leg because of that pouch or that satchel sort of thing that he's got with the, the wheat sticking out it's only that part right that's sticking out from underneath that bag that's going to get the the highest level of of highlight so that's a sort of how i build the contrast here i really wanted the texture and the folds to stand out so probably more gets a brighter highlight than what it really should i suppose in reality um but it just helps to build that contrast but yeah just that finishing point with the highlight was just right out on his knee because that's the part that would get just the the most light all right and so now on to highlighting the skin here so yeah like i mentioned earlier with that wash it really just it darkened it too much and yeah, drained it up drying really, really blotchy. So then I redid that because um, I wanted to keep, be able to keep his skin tone quite light to try and match the artwork as much as possible. So all I've done here is just mixed up that base skin tone again. And now I'm just going around and basically just picking out all of the spots where the wash didn't pull. So all of the, the muscles on that, and then just feathering those those edges out. So I didn't worry too much here about creating too many different levels of highlighting. So I, I, I think from memory and I'll just watch it just to make sure, but I don't think I lighten the skin tone off at all. Um, so I basically just pick out all of the muscles, all of those raised um, sections with just the one level of skin tone. And that's it. I suppose I could have lightened it off and maybe picked out, out the top of his shoulders and things like that. But I didn't worry about that because I didn't really want this to be the focal point too much. That's more um, the cloth tied around his waist. So I just kept this really, really simple. Um, and also because I had already had a bit of trouble um, with the skin tone, I didn't want to complicate it too much. So yeah, very, very simple. Um, just going around and just picking out all of those, um, just all of the muscles with that base skin tone and as you can see I'm now moving on to his eyes here so yeah it was just one level didn't lighten it off at all um, and in the end I was I was happy with with how it came out there's enough contrast there between the shadow and the the highlighted sections that you can see the definitions um, but it still keeps it that kind of um, yeah kind of desaturated tone um, that sort of matches the artwork all right now with the eyes, I don't think I've actually talked through these since making um, some videos in real time, but all I do here is just a really, really simple approach of filling the eye socket in with black, and then I use skeleton bone to then block in where the whites of the eyes would be, but I leave a little bit of the black at the top to kind of create a little bit of shadow, almost like the eyebrow sort of thing. Um, and I use skeleton bone instead of white, because in reality, the whites of your eyes are not actually that bright. Um, so I use skeleton bone just to block that in. Then I use black again just to do sort of the iris pupil. I don't worry about doing any color because the scale is just simply too small. And then I go back to the skin tone and then starting at the corner of each eye where the nose is, and then just sort of shape it back out towards the outer point. Um, and I'd sort of cover up the bottom section of, of the, the eye 
just to give it that shape um, and then that sort of creates that highlight across the top of the cheek as well and then as you can see I then highlighted the the rest of his face just across his um, sort of forehead and that just to just to finish the highlighting section off for the skin All right, so I'm now into the highlighting and shading step of his cloth. And in a previous video that I have put up, which was in the Zombie Side Invader series, which was Cole, um, I talked in there quite a bit about the difficulty that I have had in the past with highlighting and shading red. So initially when I started painting, I only had one red. And so the only thing that I could really do in terms of shadows and highlights was to add some black for the shadows and then some white from the highlights. Now the black in for the shadows worked well enough I suppose but adding the white in for the highlighting well that just made it pink and it moved it away from the red and it just it looked wrong but what I do now is I start with the carnage red generally speaking I start with the carnage red which is a mid-range red which but by starting with a tone like that, it gives me enough room to use darker reds to create the shadows, but it also leaves me lots of room to use brighter reds to create the highlights. And that I think is the important part because I still need to keep it red, but it needs to be brighter. So I need lots of room there for the contrast. So yeah, Carnage Red went down first and then I used Bloodstain Red, which is my darkest red in the shadows. Now, normally when I'm doing um, my sh shading and highlighting, I layer it up and I feather out the edges so that I get smooth blends between the shadow and then the base tone and then the highlight. But here, because those folds, especially there where I'm doing right now, um, the folds are really quite defined. I didn't worry about doing any feathering when I used the blood bloodstain red for the shadow. I just put it in there, did a couple of layers, let it dry, put a couple of layers in, um, and that just created a nice bit of shadow. So then I went to heraldic red to start the highlighting process, which is a lighter tone than the carnage red, but it's still mid-tone. Um, and then now I've moved on to magma red, which is quite a bit brighter, um, quite a more saturated color. And so here I'm now just picking out really the most sort of raised edges just to build that contrast, feathering it out a little bit. So I'm just sort of putting the paint down where, like with the, um, I mentioned, when I was highlighting his pants, just putting the paint down where the light would be hitting and then feathering it out from there so that it starts to build that contrast between the magma red and the heraldic red and then the carnage red. So the three tones that are being used sort of for the base tone and the highlight. And then that bloodstone, bloodstain red is left to just fall into all of the shadows. And now here I've just mixed in some orange into the red, just a little bit, um, but just to create that final bit of definition, that final bit of contrast. And now as you can see here as an example, just across the top of, um, we'll now move on to his, his cloth there, but where that cloth is wrapped around the scythe there, really just picking out only the top and then just feathering it out a bit. So this is very minimal with where it goes, um, but this is, yeah, really just to create that final bit of contrast. Um, yeah, between the, the brightest highlight and the deeper shadow, um, because this is where I think you can really make a mini look finished and stand out on the table, especially. Um, yeah, I find just adding that extra bit of highlight right at the end there really just helps to boost that contrast. And I've said plenty of times before, but I think it's just such an important thing to be able to do if you really want your mini to stand out. And in, you know, there's a number of techniques that go into building that contrast, but in terms of a process, I think it's probably the thing, the single thing that's made the biggest difference to my painting. Um, because, you know, when I first started painting, um, there really wasn't that depth of color that I got through that highlighting and shading and uh, Looking back at those minis that I painted early on They just look so much more flat than what they do now because the difference between my brightest highlight and the deeper shadow just isn't there and You know, I spend a bit of time flicking through um, Instagram um, looking at uh, you know pictures that, that others have painted of their minis and the ones that always make me pause and have an extra long look at them I keep finding are the ones that have that contrast and just that real depth of color and I think if you look at you know the, the people that do it really really well and obviously you know we're not all professionals and there's you know an expected level certainly in terms of the amount of time that we have to paint but if you look at the people that can do it really really well 
if you actually look at the color that they build up to for their highlights, often it's going well on the way to being white. And if you think about like, say there's a, a green cloak, for example, if you actually looked at a, a green cloak that was under light, it's not, you know, no part of it is bright enough that it's going towards white, but when that level of contrast has been built up, um, you know, often they are actually getting the colour to be that light, and that's what really helps it to stand out. But one thing that they do really, really well that I'm sort of working on at the moment trying to build my own ability to do is to get smooth enough blends so that you can actually seamlessly go from shadow through to highlight. And I think that's probably the thing that's really helped me to be able to achieve the level of contrast that I can is that by doing the highlights over several layers, whereas I used to do it over just one or two, um, you know, if you go back to his red cloth that's tied around his waist there, starting with Carnage Red and then using Heraldic Red for the initial highlighting, then going to Magma Red and then working in some orange into that. There's four levels of highlighting. It's those layers that get built up that help to get those smooth blends. And the smoother the blends are, the easier it is to go to a much, much brighter color because you don't have those real defined lines between one layer of highlighting and the next. And so yeah, the the less obvious it is from one layer to another, the more easy it is to go from you know one tone to another and it lets you build to that really, really bright highlight. And that's what I think that people do really, really well, whose painting stands out against, you know, the rest of the pack, is they have their blends down pat so well that they can build that contrast to such a degree that it doesn't look wrong because, yeah, those blends are so smooth. And that's the thing that I'm trying to focus on at the moment is just working those blends. Um, and, yeah, if I look at, you know, say a bit like this, so if I look at those, that, those, cloth there around his waist and then I look back at something that I painted quite a while ago that really is a big difference there the blending which then lets me build up to a much much brighter highlight and build that contrast and then that gets seen when it's in the middle of the table. Alright, so here I'm just doing a, a step that I wasn't really planning on doing, but just kind of decided at the time, just doing a bit of a, a weathered, rusty effect on his scythe. So you see, I for the base coat, I just put down blade steel um, just to get the steel look, and then I put the null oil wash over the top just to knock it down so it wasn't so bright. And then I came back with Agrax Earthshade and just starting on the cutting sort of surface of the scythe, I just sort of feathered that away just to dirty it up a little bit. And then I came in with the Typhus Corrosion and I just put that down where I thought the rust would be its most concentrated and then just feathered that out from there and then put a little bit more rust, put a little bit more of the Typhus Corrosion, sorry, on where that rust, rust would be, you know, most concentrated. And that just helped to graduate it away from the cutting surface um, to where it feathers out to the, you know, the clean steel. And then I went back with the blade steel and I just sort of, um, what's the term, stippled um, some of the blade steel back onto the edge just to make it look a little bit rougher and that, you know, it's not so, that that rust isn't so consistent. Um, and then I did sort of some scratch marks on that as well just to make it a little bit more uneven. Um, and then now I am here with the riser rust. This is a dry brush paint from Citadel, but I don't really use it as a dry brush. I try and more sort of spot it on and then blend it out a little bit um, just again to gradually the, the tones and then I come back with just some straight riser rust and yeah just sort of stipple it onto some of the, the edges um, and it just helps to give a, again that bit of contrast to the rust but it also actually builds up the effect because if you look at something that is rusted it's not a consistent level of rustiness um, across the whole surface. Um, you do have a more concentrated point and then it feathers out to no rust as the rust has spread. So I've sort of tried to recreate that a little bit. Um, and I think, you know, for the for the purpose of it, it, it worked all right. All 
All right, so here I'm getting into starting the base. Now, I wasn't planning on doing too much with the base and what you can see there in terms of the rock and the texture, that's what came, that's what the mini came as. And so I just sort of interpreted the textured surface as some grass. So all I did there was just lay down the turf green color that I have and now I'm just painting the rocks brown um, and then I do a green wash over the grass just to um, you know bring that texture out a little bit and then I was going to do like a dry brush or something like that just to bring it back out it looked awful um, because it just looked really really fake almost like he was standing on a mini golf course really um, for you know that was the first thing that came to mind when I actually looked at it and then I thought okay so no that's totally the wrong approach I've done way too little with it and it just looks really really bad it stuck out as being wrong so you'll see I come back in a little bit um, I do a little bit of a different approach so I'll talk about it a little bit more when I actually come back and do that um, but I try and build a scene a little bit more um, and actually build the terrain up a little bit so yeah if you have any plans on doing a base for this guy don't do what I did here because it just looks awful you can see I'm now laying back down some um, um, some brown just to start the mud sort of look um, that I go with um, and then yeah just cleaning up the the edges there um, because yeah it just it was all wrong All right, so here I'm just starting to follow a basing process that I have used a little bit in the past where I'm just trying to create a bit of an outdoorsy sort of grassy kind of scene. So what I wanna do here is where his left foot is stepping sort of in between those rocks, I want that to be less kind of vegetated, I suppose, than where his other foot is. So it kind of looks like he's leaving a bit of a grassy area and then stepping into more of a rocky area. So I use that Sterling mud there just, just to kind of build the surface up a little bit where his right foot is. So it kind of makes sense that when I then put down the grass effects that I do, that there's more grass around his right foot than his left foot because that kind of terrain is changing a little bit. So yeah, so it's just some Sterling mud and I just um, yeah built that up around his right foot um, and it just kind of finished about halfway across the, the base. You can kind of see the line there. Um, and now I thought if I left those rocks as brown, they would blend in too much into the, the muddy effect that I was sort of going for. So I painted them gray, um, put the black wash down there um, just to bring that texture out a little bit. And now here, instead of dry brushing the texture on, I'm just trying to actually deliberately pick out the more raised surfaces because in the past I have done a dry brush just to try and bring that texture out. But what I find is unless you are super, super careful, it's really, really easy to fill those little crevices in. And because the rocks here are so small and the texture is so fine, um, it would be very, very easy to just take that texture away um, and make it really, really hard to see. So that's why I just use my brush there and just really carefully picked out those raised surfaces just because I didn't want to yeah, fill in those lower surfaces a little bit and I want that texture to still come out really, really easily. Um, and then there I just thought if I put a little bit of a brown wash on some spots, just kind of dirty the rocks up a little bit. Um, that had just helped to bring a little bit more texture out and just make them look a little bit more uneven. Um, I, I realized while I was waiting for the base to dry that I totally forgot about his tattoos. So here I'm using a new Citadel paint that I just bought the other day. Um, and this is really the first time I've actually used a Citadel paint because all of my other ones are Reaper. And for painting something like the tattoos, this is just the consistency straight out of the pot and I found it absolutely perfect for this because it is thicker than the Reaper paint and it meant that it really just held its spot really, really well and there was no chance that it was going to run anywhere. So ideally, if you were going to be base coating, obviously you'd need to thin that down, but straight from the pot, absolutely perfect for the tattoos there because it just sat exactly where I wanted it to. And so now I'm just starting to lay down the glue that the um, sort of static grass is going to go on. So you'll see that I concentrate it more on the side where his right foot is, where I built up the mud. And then there's just some little dabs here and there in between the rocks. And so now I'm just using that field grass, just 
dabbing it on, um, not worrying too much about it getting it exact because you can just obviously tip it off to the side, tap the base a little bit and any of the excess will then fall out. Um, one thing that I do do off camera is that once it was all down, I then just from the sort of the different directions, I just blew at the grass um, just to get all of the, the grass to then stand back up. Um, just so that it doesn't look so flat. Now I'm just creating a little bit of undergrowth and this is a little trick that I saw in a watch it paint it um, little video I think. This is just green tea leaves so if you haven't gotten hold of this trick this is awesome if you're doing this sort of a terrain. I just put some glue just around the edge of some of the static grass that I put down and now I'm just putting some green tea leaves down and that just creates this really really good undergrowth effect and it just adds an extra sort of level to the vegetation that's there and now i'm just gluing down one extra um tuft of grass um just so that it yeah now i've got a third level of vegetation there just so it's not quite so flat and, and it does sort of um sell that look a little bit more that he's walking out of that more vegetated area into more of a rocky area and this is just a much much better looking base than the garbage that i started off with so now just painting the rim and Arav is done. So the first character from Tainted Grail. So thank you very, very much for spending some time watching me paint another mini. Um, I hope this video has been useful for you or at the very least you just simply enjoyed watching it. So please make sure you do like and subscribe to keep up to date with these videos as they keep coming out. And with all that, this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting everyone. Cheers.